guys, and in this video, we're going to begin part one of how to make a volleyball game in Scratch. Hey guys, and in this video, we're going to make a volleyball game in Scratch. This video consists of multiple parts, so let's get started with part one. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is to get the Cube Volleyball Bare Bones Project. It's a project I made on Scratch that contains all the costumes and sounds you'll need. Now, let's get started with our player. First, drag out a one green flank clicked block. Let's start by setting a few essential things. In the look section, drag out a set size to 100% and let's change it to 20. Next, drag out a go to block and set it for negative 171 and negative 78. Let's also show the sprite. Next, let's have our player move left and right. To do this, drag out a forever block. Then, in my blocks, create a new my block, and let's call it left and right. Add an input, and call it speed. Click run without screen refresh, and press OK. Next, let's get started by having the player respond to the right arrow. Go to control, and drag out an if then block. And then in sensing, Drag out a key space press block and change it to right arrow. If this happens, let's change the X by speed. Now, this will let the player move right, but what happens if it moves too much to the right? In other words, it's touching the net. This means that the player's X position will have gone past the negative 25. If this happens, let's set the player's X position to negative 25. Go to control and drag out an if then block. Then in operators, drag out a greater than block. From motion, drag out X position. And let's change this to negative 25. Then let's set the X to negative 25 if this happens. Great, let's test this new block. Go to my blocks and drag out the left and right block and set this to five. Now, when we click the green flag, we can move the player to the right. Great, we can't move it left though. So let's add that now. Let's start by duplicating this and changing this to left arrow. Now in operators, Drag out a minus block to the side. Set this to zero and drag in speed into here. Then place it back into here. Let's also detect if it's touching the wall. This means that the X position is less than negative two, two, two. Drag an X position into here and set this to negative two, two, two. And also set this to negative two, two, two. Now, when you click the green flag, you can have the player move both left and right. Great, now let's have the player respond to gravity. We want the player to fall until it reaches the Y position of negative 81, and when we press the up arrow, we want it to jump. Let's start by creating a new variable. Click make a variable and type in gravity. Click for this sprite only and press OK. Make sure to uncheck the gravity variable so it doesn't appear on the stage. At the start of the game, let's set gravity to zero. Now, let's create a new my block and call it gravity. Make two number inputs, call one force, and call on jump height. Click run without screen refresh and press OK. Now, let's start by having the player jump. Drag an if block. Then in operators, drag out an am block. In order for our player to jump, we need to satisfy two things. One, the up arrow is being pressed, and two, the Y position is equivalent to negative 81. In other words, it's touching the ground. Go to sensing and drag out a key space press block and change this to up. Then in operators, drag out an equals block. Drag out Y position from motion into the first input and set this to negative 81. If this happens, let's set gravity to jump height. Go to variables, drag out set gravity and change this to jump height. Next, let's change Y by gravity and have gravity decrease over time. In motion, drag out change Y by 10 block and then drag in gravity from the variable section. Then drag out change gravity by one block and let's set this to force. Let's test this new block. Go to the left and drag out a gravity block into the forever loop. Change this to negative one and change this to 14. Now, when we click the green flag, huh, it looks like the player falls, but over the white line. Let's change this. Go back to the right and drag out an if then block. If the Y position is less than negative 80, meaning that it's below the ground, Then let's set its Y position to negative 81. 
Also, let's set gravity to zero. Now when we click the green flag, our player stays on the ground. And when we press up, our player also jumps. Great! We've now finished most of the code for the player. So let's start working on the volleyball now. Start by clicking on the volleyball and let's get started. First off, drag out a one green flag clicked block and let's set its size to 75%. Let's set its location to zero and 76. And let's also show the sprite. Now let's have the volleyball move. In control, drag out a forever block. And then in my blocks, create a new my block and call it movement. And with one number input called speed. Click run without screen refresh and press OK. The way the volleyball should move on the X axis is it should change its X by the direction that the volleyball is in times speed. This requires a new variable. Let's call it direction. Make sure it's selected for all sprites and press OK. Now at the beginning of the game, let's set its direction to negative 1. Now, go to motion and drag out a change x by 10 block over to the movement my block. In operators, drag out a times block. And then in variables, drag out direction and speed. Let's test this new block. Drag out movement and change this to 5. Now when we click the green flag, the volleyball moves to our side at a speed of 5. Great! Next, let's have the ball turn to give it a more realistic effect. In motion, drag out a turn clockwise by 15 degrees block. Then, drag out direction. Now we click the green flag, the ball moves and also turns. Great! Next, let's also allow gravity to work for the volleyball too. Create a new my block and call it gravity. Now, put in two number inputs. Force and hit height. Click run without screen refresh and press OK. Now let's start making this new my block. Basically, we want the volleyball to follow naturally, but if it's touching the cube, we want it to bounce. Also, we want to create a new variable called touching to make sure that we don't run the same script over and over when the player has already run the script for touching the ball. To do this, create a new variable and let's call it touching. Set this for all sprites and press OK. Now, drag out an if then else block. And drag out an and block. If we're touching the player, and if touching equals zero, then let's change the gravity for the volleyball. Let's create another variable and call it gravity. Set it for this sprite only too. Next, drag out a set direction to zero block and change it to gravity and drag in hit height. Then set direction to zero block again and set this to touching and set it to one. Now, even though we haven't developed the opponent, let's also do the same thing for the opponent too. Right click and select duplicate. If we're touching the opponent and touching equals zero, then let's do the same exact thing again. For the final else block right here, let's set touching to zero. Great! Finally, let's have the ball react to the gravity. Go to motion and drag out a change y by 10 block. Set this to gravity. Let's also change gravity by the force. Let's test this new block. Go to the left and drag in gravity. Set this to negative 0.5 and set this to 12. Finally, before we test this new block, let's set gravity to 5 at the beginning when we click the green flag. Now, when we click the green flag, the ball moves, and we can have the ball bounce off of our heads. Great! But the problem is, we need to change the direction whenever we bounce the ball off our... Well, can this be considered a head? To do this, let's drag out an if-then block and place it in the movement my block. Drag out an and block, and we need to satisfy two conditions. One if we're touching the player, and two if the direction is equivalent to negative one. Drag out a touching block. And set this to player. In operators, drag out an equals block. Set this to negative one. And then variables, drag out direction. Let's also move this my block because it's kind of getting in the way. Now, let's do three things. First of all, let's set direction to one. Second of all, let's change the x by direction times speed, so duplicate this. Then finally, let's start a sound. 
the sound basketball bounce. Let's do the same thing for the opponent too. Duplicate this and set this to opponent. Set this to one and set this to negative one. Great, now when we click the green flag, we can have it bounce off the opposite way. Great, now if you watch carefully what happened in the stage, you saw that the ball bounced through the net. This should not happen, so let's fix this. To do this, we're gonna have to create another my block. Let's call this new my block bounce. Let's add two number inputs, speed and bounce height. Click run without screen refresh and press OK. This is going to be a very long script, but don't worry, we'll get through it. First of all, let's have the ball bounce off the walls. Go to control and drag out an if then block. We need to satisfy two conditions, so drag out an and block. First of all, the x position must be less than negative 224, and second of all, the direction must equal negative 1. Drag out a greater than block and an equals block. Set this to negative 224 and set this to negative 1. Then drag out x position and in variables direction. Next, we need to do three things. In fact, they're the exact same three things we did before. So simply duplicate this and put in here. Let's also change this to one. Now, what happens if it bounces off the other wall? Let's do that too. Duplicate this, drag an x position in here, and set this to 224. Set this direction to one, and set this direction to negative one. Great. Let's also test this new block. Go over here, and in my blocks, drag and bounce. Let's set this to five, and let's set this to also five. Now, when we click the green flag, the ball can bounce off the walls. Great. Next, let's have it bounce off the net. There are two possible conditions. One, it bounces off the top of the net, in which you should just do a gentle bounce. Or, second of all, it bounces off the side of the net, in which it should bounce the opposite direction. So, let's do this. Go to control and drag out an if-then block, and let's see if it's touching the net. Then, drag out an if-then-else block. If the y position is greater than 60, then what we do is simple. We set gravity to bounce height. So go to the variable section and drag out a set direction to zero block, and let's set this to gravity. Then up here, drag in bounce height. Now, for the condition where it's bouncing off the sides of the net, drag out an if-then-else block. And let's see if the x position is greater than zero, meaning it's bouncing off the right side instead of the left side. If this happens, let's set direction to one. Then, let's get off the net. Drag out a repeat until block. And drag out a not block. And touching net. Then, we need to change our x by direction times speed. Duplicate this. Drag out start sound basketball bounce. And drag in change x right here. Finally, let's also start the sound basketball bounce too. But what if the x position is less than zero? Then let's duplicate this and set this to negative one. Great, now our ball can respond to touching the net. Let's test this by clicking the green flag and let's see if it bounces off the net. It does! Great, well guys, we just finished part one of Cube Volleyball and Scratch. In the next part, we'll work on the opponent so we can have somebody to play against. We'll also add some more cool features too. Thank you for watching this video. If you like learning how to make your own video games, hit the subscribe button. Watch out for my next video be there or be MC squared. See ya. Um. Uh. Don't worry, we'll fix this in part two.